Okay, so in the previous videos, we already covered how to find the Laplace transform, how to find the inverse Laplace transform, and even the S shifting. So on today's video, we're gonna uh, cover something that will help us um, solve our Laplace or inverse Laplace transforms in a much easier way. Uh, so that whenever we have like a weird expression that does not appear in our table, we can basically work it out very in a way that the terms will actually appear on our table and that we can solve them. And that's where partial fraction decomposition basically uh, comes to help. So basically partial fraction decomposition, all it does um, is that you can have an expression where the denominators, there's like a multiplication of them. And then you can rewrite that as the sum of those two uh, fractions with the corresponding denominators. So let's look at an example. So here we have uh, 27, we're thinking we have to find the Laplace inverse of 27 over S squared plus nine S. And you can see that if we look in our table to the right, there's no uh, expression that looks like that. I don't know if we can factor out the 27, but there's nothing that looks like in the bottom of S squared plus a number times S. We have S squared plus a number squared, but not something times S. So this does not appear in the table. And instead of panicking, what we can do is rewrite this uh, expression as the sum of the, the denominators, and you'll see how. And hopefully, it, we can find those expression in the table. So for this one, you can see if I factor out an S, I have now 27 over S times S plus 9. And now I know that we can find something like this. And now I can rewrite this using PFD as the sum of uh, A over S plus B over S plus 9. So any fraction that I have, you can rewrite it uh, like this. This is where partial fraction composition does. You probably saw in algebra or any classes before. Um, yeah, but if you, if you don't remember, this is a really good reminder. So basically what we have here, now we have uh, A over S plus B over S plus nine, where A and B are just some constants uh, that we can find later on. But you can see that those expressions, we they can be found. So if we take the Laplace of, of that, A over S and B over S plus nine, factor out the A and the B, we will have one over S and one over S plus nine. So you can see that we do have those expressions and it, that's for one, and for e to the at, so, so basically you see we can have, we will know that our basically our Laplace inverse of that expression will be equals to a plus b times e to the negative 19. Uh, and then we just need to find whatever a and b are. So we can plug it in and, you know, solve for our thing. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, all we have to do now is just solve for a and b. Um, but we already know how our answer should look like and if we don't have it like that then we probably made a mistake on the way but let's do that so we have 27 over s uh, times s plus 9 and once again basically to combine the fractions we if to solve for a and b we have to combine the fractions you know cross multiply so then we'll have a times s plus 9 plus b times s and the bottoms they'll basically you know this is how you, this is how you combine fractions s times s plus 9 now, because they have the same denominator, it means that we can now equal the numerators. You can see they have the same denominator, so now the numerators should then be the same, right? So we have a times s plus nine plus b times s should equal to 27. And now this is the equation that we're gonna use to find a and b. So let's distribute the letters and we're gonna have a times s plus nine a plus b s equal to 27. And just like we did in previous uh, videos, in previous concepts, we have one equation, two unknowns. So let's split this up into an equation for constants and for the terms of S. So if, if, if I wanna basically just look for my constants, on my left side, my only constant is 9A. And on my left, it's uh, on my right, I mean, it's 27. So solving for A, we get 27 over nine, which is three. Then I'll do an equation for the S. So every term that has an S, so you have A plus B, and there's no S terms on the right. So A plus B equals zero, which means that B is equal to negative A, 
and then therefore b is equals to negative three. So now I know that my solution, if I plug it in, it, it will just be three minus three uh, e to negative 19. So uh, we can do that here just to show you for proof. So the a over s plus b over s minus nine is equals to three over s minus three over s plus nine. Take the Laplace of that. Once again, if we factor out the three, so we have one over s, one over s plus nine. And once again, you can see our answer is three minus three e to the negative 90. So you can see P of D is really useful uh, to break down terms to make it easier to be found. And just as a rule of thumb here, um, your when you're using P of D, your numerator should be a power less than your denominator. So for example, here we have S, the highest power in the bottom for both of them, it's an S. So the one power less will be a constant. So we have A and B. But if we would have in here an S square, then on the top we will have BS or AS plus and B. You know, we have to have the same expression, one power less all the way up to the constants. We have S cubed, then we have AS squared plus BS plus C and so on. So let's do another example. So in this one, we have 3S over S squared plus 9S plus 20. Once again, this is an expression that does not come on the table. Um, so the bottom, what we can do is maybe try to factor it out. At least for this one, we can. So we have S plus four and S plus five. So we have two multiplying terms in the bottom. So we can use PFD to rewrite this as the sum of those two fractions where A and B are just unknown constants. If we take the Laplace inverse of that, factor out the A and B, you can see that this is just two exponentials a times e to the negative 4t plus b e to the negative 5t. So uh, once again, let's let's do PFD and let's combine the terms. So we have a times s plus 5 plus b times s plus 4. And the bottom, we have s plus 4 times s plus 5. And because we have the same denominator on both fractions, it means that we can equal the tops, the numerators. So we have a times s plus 5 plus b times s plus 4 is equal to 3s. Distribute here, you're going to get our, fun our equation as plus 5a plus bs plus 4b equals to 3s. Once again, one equation, two unknowns, divided into two uh, separate equations, one for your constants, where we have 5a plus 4b equals to 0, because there's no constants on the right. And so for a, we have a is equal to negative 4b over 5. And then our second equation will be just for the terms that have an S, which we're going to have uh, A plus B. And on the right, we have A3 because that one does have an S. So solving here, plug it in A, uh, we can combine B. So we have negative 4B over 5 plus B. Uh, basically, that simplifies to B over 5 equals to 3. So for B, we get B15, plug that back in A, and we get an A is equal to negative 12. So... Now, basically, we know that if we plug those in on the on the solution that we already found, we can get that basically our Laplace inverse, it will be negative 12 uh, times e to the negative 4t plus 15 e to the negative 5t. You can see the last line on the bottom, it's not really necessary to do because we already know how the solution will look like with your on the top, but with the constants. And it will be just a matter of substituting a and b. But as you'll do the bottom line, just so that you guys can see, you know, uh, the process of this. So you can see uh, PFD is not too complicated. Uh, this example was pretty simple. Maybe we'll do other ones in class where uh, might require a little more, uh, like a more uh, terms, or more equations. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and I hope that it I hope that this was uh, helpful to you guys. So. That it's on PFD. We'll see more more ways. There's a least there's at least two different ways. We have PFD, we have convolution, and we have using the formulas, which we're gonna cover in their own videos later on. But until now, uh, hope that this is enough information to help you guys uh, do well on your homeworks. So until the next time, good luck. Mm -hmm.